Hey there! It's Aviva from Elementor. Today I'll show you how to add impressive animations to your site using Elementor's Lottie widget. Here we have a web page about cycling with a colorful PNG image of a cyclist on a bike. It has a motion effect applied to it so that the image appears to be gliding across the page as we scroll. But you know what would be even better? To have the cyclist appear to be pedaling the bike while he glides across. Enter Lottie. Lottie animations are animations rendered from JSON files. Small in size, but large in impact. They can be combined with other options for even more possibilities. So there's no need to shy away from using animation files on your website and risk slowing down your site. Lottie animation files are virtually weightless. Let's dive in and see how it works. I'll go ahead and right click to delete the image widget since we'll be using the Lottie widget instead. Now search Lottie in widgets and drag in the Lottie widget. We have two options for the source. We'll be using a media file for our final animation, but first we'll go over the external URL option. For this option, we can use a link to an animation online. Let's visit the Lottie Files website to search for something that suits our page. The Lottie Files website has loads of free and paid files we can use on our website. This cycling file looks like it could work. And it's free. Open it. Click the clipboard under Lottie Animation URL to copy the link. Paste it here in the external URL field and the animation is loaded right in the editor. You have a variety of settings and styling options, which we'll go over shortly in the next animation. Switch to media file for the source and click the icon to upload your JSON file. If it's the first time you've uploaded a JSON file, you'll get this warning. Before clicking enable, please make sure that this file is from a reliable source as JSON files may potentially include malicious content. Insert it. Over here, we can align the animation. With caption, you can control the text you see below the animation. If you'd like the animation to link elsewhere, such as for a button, you can add a link here. Next, click the settings dropdown to control the animation's behavior. First, select the trigger, which as it sounds, determines what action will set off the animation. By default, it's set to viewport, so it will begin as soon as the animation comes into view. We'll go through the other triggers shortly, but first we'll review the settings under the viewport trigger, as most of them apply to the other triggers as well. The viewport setting, which is available for the viewport and scroll triggers, determines when to begin the movement based on the viewport height, meaning the visible size of the device screen. Loop will set the animation to continuous, and when selected, you can choose how many times you'd like the animation to play. Leave it empty for an infinite loop. As it sounds, play speed sets the speed at which the animation plays. Reverse animation will change the animation to play in the opposite direction. With start point and end point, you can change where in the loop the animation begins and ends, so you can choose to only play a piece of the animation from and to whichever point works for your design. Depending on your needs, here you can choose the renderer type, SVG or canvas. To improve your page loading time, set the lazy load switch to yes and the animation will load only when visible to the user. Now go back to the trigger options and select on click to play the animation when clicked. If you added a link to the animation, you can set how long the animation should play before the link is opened in link timeout. The next trigger is on hover and as it suggests, the animation will play when hovered over. And here on Hover Out, we can select to reverse or pause when we move the cursor off the animation. And whether the animation begins when hovering over the animation, column, or the whole section. The scroll trigger starts animation upon scrolling, and you can choose whether the effects should be relative to the viewport or the entire page. Let's preview it for a better look. Lastly, we have the None trigger. 
The animation will begin playing as soon as the page loads. Moving on to Style, where you can set the animation width and max width, as well as its normal and hover styles. Drag the opacity to make the animation semi-transparent and play with the CSS filters to change the blur, brightness, contrast, saturation, and hue. The Lottie animation settings are complete and our cyclist is moving those wheels, but he's not actually getting anywhere. Let's add a motion effect so he can get across the terrain. Click the motion effects dropdown and switch scrolling effects on. Click horizontal scroll and select to left. Set the speed to seven. Now let's update and preview. Wow, look at him go. There are multiple ways you can apply the Lottie widget to make your design stand out, such as this button in the header, for example. It may look like a regular button, but in fact, it's a Lottie animation. And that's it. Now you know how to use Elementor's Lottie widget and add eye-catching animations to your site to really make them stand out. These are just a few examples of endless animation possibilities. So drag that Lottie widget in and get creative. We can't wait to see what you come up with. For more tutorials, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.